Blender World Day. This is Jonathan Williamson from CG Cookie, and today I have a completely shameless plug for you. I'm going to be demoing a tool in the Retopo Flow add-on, which is something that we sell on the Blender market, but I think it's pretty cool and I would like to show it to you. So some of you are probably aware of Retopo Flow, which is the the add-on that myself and my team uh, have been working on for a couple of years now, and basically our goal is to simplify retopology. It is not uncommon at all for people to say that retopology is the most tedious and worst part of the character modeling, or even, frankly, just about any modeling workflow that either involves sculpting or is for games. So anywhere that you have to take a high resolution model and create a lower resolution model of that, it involves retopology, typically. And most people hate that. I'm one of those weird ones. I love retopology. I think it's incredibly therapeutic. I think it's relaxing. I love it. I love the challenge of it. But I recognize that most people are not like me. And so what we've been trying to do is to build a tool that makes it a lot easier. You know, for a long time now, there's been a lot of talk, you know, every SIG graph, there's a new paper or a new demonstration of automatic retopology, or, you know, never have to, imagine never having to retopologize your models ever again. But one of the things that most of these things miss out on, regardless of how freaking cool they are typically, and how far the technology is coming, is they typically miss out on control. And, you know, there have been a few papers that have attempted to provide a real fine-tuned amount of artist control to the retopology process while still keeping it mostly automated, but invariably it ends up being very finicky and doesn't work as well as we would like, and it makes it very hard to actually integrate into a real workflow. So this is where we wanted to come in and basically build a tool that gives you complete control but takes all of the pain out of the retopology process. So, you know, you shouldn't have to manually be shrink wrapping your model all the time. You shouldn't have to constantly re-snap your vertices to the surface. You shouldn't even have to worry about snapping anything to the surface. Like everything you do should just snap to the surface. Like it should just automatically conform to whatever object you are retopologizing. So there's a lot of stuff like that that we're trying to take the pain out of. So we started off, we had the first two tools, which was contours, which allows you to retopologize symmetrical forms, such as a neck, an arm, a leg, anything like that fairly quickly. And it works pretty well. It's pretty slick and easy, um, but it's also got a fairly limited use case. Next was polystrips, and polystrips allows you to create basically strips of quads following Bezier curves that you can then manipulate after the fact for basically mapping out your topology flow. And this was always really cool and it actually worked really well, um, particularly once we started adding in things like patch controls, where you can then fill in the holes on your, between your strips. But the problem with poly strips that was, you know, an anticipated even, was that you still lost, missed out on some of the control that you wanted. You know, for example, even with this very quick surface I've just created, we're still going to have major problems when it comes down to trying to work around the nose. You know, if I start, start working on the nostrils here, you know, I can do a little bit, or I, can, I mean, I can actually, actually do quite a bit. But for example, once I've done this, what am I going to do within strips or even, even within the patches to try and fill this area? Like, it's going to be really hard to do. So this is where Polypen then comes in. And the idea of Polypen is basically this. You should be able to draw a mesh in any structure that you wish, in any order you wish, using nothing but your mouse, so, such that you can create quads, triangles, imgons, you name it. Everything should snap to the surface, and you shouldn't have to memorize a whole lot of hotkeys and different tools to do all of this. It should be one tool, it should be one pin. And that's basically what Polypen is. So if I activate Polypen, you notice it immediately pulls in all my existing geometry. And basically what we can do is we can now move this stuff around. So I can just uh, click and drag on any element, vertex, edge, face, you name it. Everything stays snapped to the surface, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, I can use this to then move some things around, and that's all fine and dandy. But where the real power comes in is if I hold down control, I can just click and insert a vertex. Well, many of you will know this from 
using regular Blender controls is, you know, control click extrude is really, really useful. And in fact, is one of the primary tools that we use in Blender's default tool set for retopology. But what the default tools can't do is this. And so what you'll notice here is using no additional tools, no extrude, nothing, I'm able to just control click and control click. That's the only thing I'm doing. I'm not using any additional hotkeys. And just from starting with an existing selection, I control click, I control click, I have a face. Control click, control click, I have another quad. And so basically the way that it works and what it allows you to do is based on your current selection and what you click on determines how it extrudes. So for example, if I have an edge right here and it's selected, I control click once. It's going to extrude a triangle. I control click again over here. It's going to automatically detect that I have both a triangle and a vertex selected. And so it should convert that to a quad. Well, now I have, it's automatically created that quad. And now I have two edges. I have the edge that started from each of the two triangles coming out to the new vertex, which means that I can now insert another triangle or quad in either direction. So I could go this way. And if I just click on this edge, you'll notice it just bridges the two because, well, if you have an edge selected and you click on another edge, it just infers that you want to bridge those two. Well, I could undo that. And maybe instead I want to click on this edge. Okay. Well then it's going to automatically detect that going along the surface, this is the closest vertex. So let's connect there. Cool. We've created a triangle. So it's effectively bridged the same thing. Well, now I want, I want a quad because really what I wanted is this. So I just control click again. And since my triangle was automatically selected, because basically every time we create something, we leave the newly created elements selected. So in this case, I created two new edges with one click. So it leaves them selected. And what this means is that you basically never have to, within the creation process, you can just basically click your way through the entire model and create everything that you want in one pass. And this becomes really, really powerful, but it goes a bit further. You'll notice here, I didn't do my math very well and I ended up with an extra edge here. Well, normally using Blender's default tools, you might select these two edges, you might collapse them. There's any number of ways you could get rid of this extra edge. Well, it'd be really simple if we could just click and drag on a vertex and just drop it on top and just let it automatically merge. Done. We now have a merged space. Um, I can select this edge. And since I want to go ahead and fill here, I'll just click over to this edge, click to that edge, click maybe to this edge, click to this edge, this one. Um, in this case, well, you know, maybe even though this is not good geometry, but just for uh, proof of concept to demo it, maybe we want to leave this triangle here. Well, then all you have to do is just toggle your selection by pressing A, same as Blender's default, default hotkeys, reselect my edge, just click, oops, click, 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 and click. There we go. Um, you know what, this isn't, isn't good because that's not good topology. So I'm going to go ahead and just merge that together. Well, so instead to improve that topology, maybe I want to just send another edge up through here. Well, that's easy enough to do. I can just control click on that vertex. It'll add another, another vertex right in control, click again, control click again. And I've created a cut right through there. You'll notice it has full support for quads, triangles, and ingons. But since I don't want this triangle or the ingon here, I just click and drag on that vertex and done. And now my, my topology is much cleaner. I can go ahead and bring my loops back down here. And then you know what? I realized that this spacing isn't very good. So why don't I just go ahead? Ah, I got one error. There we go. Uh, but you notice it didn't crash. So we've, we've improved the recovery tools a lot. Uh, but so I just insert a vertex, control click, control click, and control click. And you'll notice this whole time, everything is snapped to the surface. You know, that's kind of the whole premise behind the tool is you shouldn't have to worry about surface snapping surface snapping should just happen. You notice if I, if I hit enter, my mesh is all created. If I go back into polypin, we're back right where we were. Uh, let's go ahead and just take this a bit further. You know, maybe I want to start working around the neck like this, like this, like this. And something that you may realize that's really cool about this is unlike poly strips and contours to a degree, which really were both Mostly limited to organic models, just A, because of how they were designed, but also just their use case. You know, there's not very many hard surface models where you have nice, clean, flowing loops of, of faces, you know, like you do around, around the face and such. Uh, in hard surface models, you don't tend to have that. 
but once you have complete control like this, you really don't care what you're modeling because we have complete placement control over everything that we do. Now, there are some tools that we would like to add to Polypin that would make it much better for hard surface models. For example, it'd be really nice uh, if we had like some constraint options for you know horizontal or vertical constraints or constraining you know new extrusions. Like if I come out here, like just constrain it to 45 degree axes or stuff like that. But that kind of stuff will all come in time. You know, this is something that we are actively working on. Uh, we still have plenty of of work to do, but it is already available. Um, and like I said, this is a shameless plug. So if you like this kind of tool, if you want to support it, you can find it on the Blender Market. Um, but if you don't like it, that's totally fine. Uh, all of the code for it is open source um, and it's gonna stay that way. Even though we sell the product, really what we're doing is we're selling the service and the tools, not selling the code. All the code stays completely GPL. If you want to, if you see some of the stuff that you like, you know, maybe you like the surface snapping in it and you're a developer and you want to use that same surface snapping, by all means, use it, take the code. We would love that. Um, you know, that's just part of the ethos around Blenders. We want to give back to the community. And that doesn't mean necessarily giving the tool away for free, but it does mean contributing back to the source code, contributing to the Blender Development Fund, you know, all of these things that help grow the community around Blender, grow the development efforts of it, and just make everything within Blender a lot nicer. So that's kind of our goal with this. And basically everything else that we're doing is we want to continue to support the Blender community and Blender itself. Uh, thanks for watching and let me know what you think.